coming. Morning, sir. Morning. Fill her up, will you? Right, sir. <sighs> Interesting weather. Clear up a bit later, sir. Yeah, I hope so. Shooting season's just started. Oh. What are they after? Pheasant? Oh, pheasant, grouse, blubber, you name it. Very rich shooting country down here. Can I check your oil, sir? No, the oil's okay. That'll be 26 and 3 then, sir. You do any shooting yourself, do you? Uh, some. That's what you're down here for, is it? Do a bit of shooting. I wish I were. Keep the change. Thank you, sir. I wish I were. That's a good way to get yourself killed.
you've got the most horrible whistle I've ever heard. Me? I have. Horrible it is. Hey, look at him. He's down! <laughs> girl was scared. I don't blame her. She's a drive, so I drove. And we would have made it, except a third guy stepped out ahead of us. I see. And he was the one that took a shot at you, eh? Well, he's the one who hit the car. They all shot at us, Inspector. <laughs> You called me? Miss Winfield? Yes. I called you. Miller, Detective Sergeant. Is John all right? Oh, yes, he's fine. Perfectly all right. Whatever happened? Well, he says he's had a car accident. Uh, Mr. Mannering had a bump on the head. Nothing serious. It just happened to daze him, but uh, he managed to walk away from the scene of the crash. So? Well, we haven't found it yet. The car or the crash. But there's more to it than that, however. That's why I called you. So if you don't mind coming with me, I'll see you in. John? Hello, Cordelia. Are you all right? Oh, yeah. Perfectly fit. Right, Doc? Physically, you're in fine shape. But there is a possibility of mild concussion. I suggest you stay there and rest a while. Uh-uh. It's that girl we should be worrying about. Have you found that car yet? No, but we're still looking. Oh, that's crazy. You picked me up about 12 o'clock, right? Yes. I went off the road at 11. One hour. It's just one hour between my crashing and you finding me. Now, how far could I walk in that time? Two or three miles, maybe? Four at the most. We are still looking. And meanwhile, what about the girl? Oh, yes, Mr. Mannering. Perhaps it'll be a good idea if you gave me a description of the girl again. Well, she was blonde and pretty and scared. That's about all I noticed. Really, Mr. Mannering? That's all I had time to notice. When somebody's blasting at you with a shotgun, you don't have time to get personal. I'll take it. Yes? Well, Miller's speaking. Well. Right, we're on our way. It found the car. And the girl. There was no girl. <laughs> Check the area. A mile either way, sir. Then the guys with the guns must have taken her. Because before I passed out, I saw her. She was lying right here, sprawled half out of the car. That was after the man took a shot at you. That's right. The one who hit the windshield. That's right. He hit it, split it into a million pieces, crystallized it. Wait a minute. This isn't the place. This isn't where it happened at all. Look, I'll tell you, it isn't the same place. I stopped for gas about a quarter of a mile back down the road. Is there a filling station there? No, there isn't one for four or five miles. Well, then I'm right. It isn't the same place. I don't think I quite understand, Mr. Mannering, so let's see if I've got it right. Now, you told me a country road and a white paling fence, right? That's right. There they are, sir. Then on top of that, there's your car. It is your car, I suppose? Oh, yes. My car. Of course it is. The accident didn't happen here. I admit it looks like it, very much like it, but it happened in a different place. Mr. Mannering, if you could just tell us how it was different. Well, I don't know. There's no one thing I can pin down. It's just different, that's all. You're sticking to your story. You say story like it was a complete fiction. I'm giving you the facts. John, you must be mistaken. No, there's no mistake. It's understandable. The doctor said that you might have some concussion. Look, I'm perfectly all right. I didn't dream this thing. You sure of that? Look, Mr. Mannering, in my business, I hear all sorts of odd stories. I listen to them. I believe them when the facts bear them out. No, you hear me out. I'm willing to go along with you if you'll explain one thing to me. 
That shattered windscreen that isn't shattered. I can't explain it. I just know there's something screwy around here, that's all. At least we agree about one thing. Inspector, this was under the seat in the car. Here, let me have a look at that. Do you always carry whiskey in your car, Mr. Mannering? I never carry whiskey in my car. This isn't mine. You've never seen it before. That's right. Somebody must have planted it. The man who shattered your windscreen and uh, moved your car after the accident. Now, listen, I don't know... No, you listen to me, Mr. Mannering. You have told me a wild story with nothing to substantiate any part of it. Now, even here in the country, we've heard of your reputation. You have a good record. Because if you hadn't, I'd have charged you with dangerous driving. Look, Inspector, instead of accusing me, you should be after the guys who shot at me. I deal in facts, Mr. Mannering. And so far, you have not given me one. Not one! I'm willing to concede that blow on your head may have left you confused. That is a doctor's concern, not a policeman's. I'm sorry, Mr. Mannering, but I've got no more time to listen to your fantasies. Good day. Back to the station. It's crazy. I tell you, it's crazy. The fence, the windshield, the whiskey. Did you ever know me to take a drink on the road? Well, no. But you did have an accident and you were hit on the head. The memory does funny things. Well, mine doesn't. And I'm going to prove it. Oh, come on, sir. You don't have any doubts, really, do you? The whole thing's so far-fetched. Mm. Mannering told it with such conviction. I think he believes it implicitly. Well, I don't doubt it. He was shaken up, his car went off the road, he was unconscious for a while. Well, he's simply not thinking straight, that's all. Hmm. I suppose you're right. You did get a nasty bump on the head. Look, Cordelia, everything I said is true. It happened. It actually happened. This morning, Friday the 3rd, I left the auction room. I was driving down this country road. It was about 11... Friday? Did you say Friday? Today's Saturday. Saturday the 4th. Twenty-four hours. Disappeared, just like that. I wasn't expecting you back until today. I told you, the auction was a flop. There was nothing there that interested me. So I left today early. Yesterday. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Which one, or will you make the decision? Take that one. And if this isn't the one? We'll go back and try the other road. I have to find the exact spot where I piled up. John, why couldn't you have just stuck to the main road? It was a nice day. I wanted to see some of the country. Well? Take that one. Enormous hand. Seems to mean something. Something I saw. There was a hand pointing like this. A gigantic hand. A fate? Or could it have been that well-known moving finger? That having written... And there were scales. Shiny silver scales. And they were on something. Some sort of structure. Mm -hmm. Like an oil derrick. Oh, brother. John, you know this is the umpteenth road we've... Slow down. This is it. Can't be. Fence isn't damaged. This fence has been repainted. Could have been done any time the last month. These bushes are broken down. The grass is flattened. Tractor or anything could have done that. 
No, I think my car did it. Anyway, we can find out for sure. If this is the place, there'll be a filling station just down the road. Okay. But promise me one thing. If there's no filling station, we stop right now. Stop and go back to London and forget the whole thing. Where to? Right around the next bend. Right around the next bend. If there is a garage around the corner, it still doesn't prove... Look. There it is. Looks pretty deserted. It's very quiet. When I stopped here this morning, yesterday morning, that is, I heard gunshots right over there. Nothing special about that. It's open season. The hunters are out. Hunting for what? Anybody home? Breaking and entering, you know. If they catch you, I'll throw the book at you. I'll duck. What are you hoping to find anyway? I don't know. That makes it hard for me to help. Look, if being in here bothers you, you can go wait in the car. No. I've often wondered what the inside of a woman's prison looks like. I'll stay. Shattered. Safety glass, the kind they put in windshields. My windshield. You're guessing. I don't think so. Silver scales on top of a derrick. That's what I saw. Still doesn't prove anything. I'm telling you, that's what I saw. Look, I don't want to be the specter of the feast, but I can't help finding logical explanations for all these things. Then go ahead, explain this one. It's obvious. You admitted you stopped here. You saw it then. I'm sorry, John. Well, there's no need to be, because that's not what happened. I stayed by the car. I didn't even come in here. All right. So you saw it through the open doors, then? Well, it could have been that. That girl came running from that direction over there. That's a lot of country. There's a village over there. Come on, I need a drink. Don't go down there yet. They may turn around and come back this way. I don't want them to see you. You're doing an awful lot to make sure he don't know I mended his car. What I do is my business. Oh, yeah. Mended his car. That makes it mine, too. Look, we paid you a lot of money. Part of it was to replacing the windshield. The rest of it to stop you asking questions. All right, all right. No need to get nasty. So why don't you just go home and forget the whole thing? Just one thing, though. I mean, uh, suppose he comes around to my house and starts asking questions. I mean, uh, what shall I tell him? You tell him nothing. You've never seen him before. You've never seen his car. Well, uh, that might not be so easy. I mean, uh, 
Suppose he uh, wants to buy some information. How much? Yeah, well, uh, must be worth something. Going to all this trouble. Uh, shall I say, uh, half hundred, just to start with. Just to start with? Yeah, well, uh, there's please. I mean, if they come around asking questions, I've got nothing to lose, have I? I'll just lend you the windscreen. Well, you put me in a very difficult spot. Have I? Well, uh, I'm sure we can reach a settlement. Uh, shall we go down to the office? Griffiths, yeah? No! No! You know, sir? Thank you. Nice country you got around here. Oh, thank you very much, sir. And especially that stretch south of here. Looks like it'd be good game country. It is. Who owns the rights to that? Who'd I have to apply to if I wanted to take a gun in there? Oh, it's split up. Part of the land belongs to the uh, Martinfield Golf Course. The rest belongs to two or three other landowners. Uh, it's the Scots, the Prentices and the Osbournes. They've all got houses in and around that area. Uh, you're, you'd have to talk to one of them. I see. Thank you. What was all that about? That's uh, just a hunch. That girl had to be running from somewhere. From the Scots or the Prentices? Or perhaps she couldn't stand the way they mixed the martinis. Or the golf course. That's it. She walked across the fairway as the colonel drove up, completely ruined his stroke. So he drew his trusty shotgun out. There was a girl. With an enormous hand, I suppose. Six feet across, thumb to finger. Relentlessly pointing. Hold it. It was a cat. A cat with eyes like that, staring at me. And the hand kept pointing. But every time I tried to follow it, I ran into a wall. A green wall. But it wasn't really a wall, because it was soft to the touch it gave. And I couldn't get through it. I think an early night for you and a sleeping pill. Something's going on around here. And don't I know it? Someone deliberately put me down for 24 hours so they could change the scene of the crash. Now, what does that add up to? First signs of a nervous breakdown. Someone who couldn't afford to have anyone snooping around, even if it was to investigate a road accident. So what do they do? They take the accident and they move it somewhere safer. Safer? Oh, yes, yes, I see. Is this one of your days for being transfixed? That girl. So? That's her. That's the girl who ran out in front of me. Who is that girl? Yes? The girl here in the picture. Who is she? Oh, you mean uh, Jill. Was uh, ladies junior champion for the area. Good little golfer. Jill who? Well, Jill Prentice, one of the people I was telling you about. And uh, father owns uh, Crestview, big house up there on the hill. Nice chap, handicap of eight. How do we get there? Well, best way is across the golf course. There is a footpath. Thank you. Come on. My drink! These Americans, craziest people. You sure are right about that. Yeah. Shoes are ruined. I'll buy you a dozen pair. A deal? Deal.
Yes? I'd like to talk to Miss Prentice, Miss Jill Prentice. She does live here, doesn't she? Uh, yes, sir. She does live here. Would you just tell her a friend would like to talk to her? I'm sorry, sir, but Miss Prentice is indisposed. Sorry to hear that. We'll have to talk to her anyway. It's urgent. You might even say it's a matter of life and death. I'm sorry again, sir. But I'm not permitted to disturb Miss Prentice. Really? But I will tell Mr. Prentice you are here. Thank you. If you don't mind waiting, sir. Miss Prentice is indisposed. John, I have an awful feeling we're going to make terrible fools of ourselves. Good afternoon. Prentice, Mark Prentice. I'm Jill's father. Hello, I'm John Mannering. This is Cordelia Winfield. How do you do? How do you do? I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting. I understand you're a friend of my daughter's. That's right. Mannering. Forgive me, I don't recall Jill mentioning you. It was only a passing acquaintance. I see. And where did you meet? On the road, about a mile from here. I gave her a lift. I see. Her car broke down, did it? No, she was being chased by some armed men. Uh, forgive me, but uh, I don't quite understand. You will when I talk to your daughter. But I understand she's not feeling well. On the contrary, she's in the best of health. Just an excuse when she doesn't feel like being disturbed. May I talk to her? Of course you may. Jill, darling. This is Mr. Mannering. Hello. He seems to think that you and he have already met. Mannering? Some nonsense about your being pursued by armed men. That can't be true, can it, dear? Is it true? No. Then tell Mr. Mannering. You're mistaken. Now, wait a minute. Yesterday morning, you ran in front of my car. They were shooting at you. I never saw you before. Never. But you were there. That's enough, Mr. Mannering. You've seen my daughter. She's answered your questions. I don't know what this is about. And I don't want to know. I must ask you to leave my house. Mr. Prentice, she was there. Mistaken. No. No. That was the girl. But you've seen her and she denied it. Then how come I recognize her if we'd never met before? How did I pick her out? Well, the pub. You stopped off there yesterday, had a drink, saw the photograph, and it registered. That's fine. Except I never went to the pub before. You don't remember stopping, that's all. It's possible. You've been in an accident. Your mind's all mixed up. Marvin. Sir? I think my daughter should go back to her room now. What about Mannering, sir? I should think he's a very worried man. My dear little daughter managed to convince him that he was mistaken. All the same, take Freddy, check the grounds. Right away, sir. Come on. You 
thinking what I'm thinking? Your dream. Everywhere you turned, a green wall. It was soft, it gave, yet I couldn't get through. I think we ought to talk to the police again. Oh, just a minute. I have to have solid evidence. Proof. Of what? That's what I have to find out. <laughs> that way. Oh, no, United Front. Well, we've come full circle. But I know, and I'd have brought my compass. You're lucky. You only lost 24 hours. I'll be an old, old lady before we get out of here. I don't want to get out. I want to find the center. Bunk. This must be where they held me. Take a look at that. What do you see? Little red spots, a sort of rash. Needle marks. No wonder I had the big blank. They shot me full of drugs. But not enough. So the crash happened. Where you said it did. But for some reason or another, they couldn't afford an investigation there, so they brought me here, gave me an armful of sleep, left me to it. They miscalculated. I woke up, started to wander through that maze for hours, maybe. Finally found my way out. And they found you'd gone. And they had to work fast, cover up their traces. They fixed the car windshield. Fixed the fence? And placed the accident somewhere else. That's it. Just one thing. Who are they? Let me know when you work that one out. Who is he? The guy from the filling station. Hold it right there, Tom. All right, now drop it. Now outside, both of you. Thank <laughs> you. 
On your feet. All right, get it over with. Shoot. I'm saving you for the police. The police? That's right. You got any arguments about that? No. No, except I... I am the police. a load off my mind when our VIPs get where they're going. You can call off the other boys now. Okay. All units, all units, this is central. The general has arrived at the golf club. No incidents. You can come off watch now and report to Major Daniels of the clubhouse. Message ends. Over and out. Want to go watch the general play some golf? Uh, later. We'll wait till the other units check in. Maybe Farrell will come with them. Farrell. Walter K. Farrell. Lieutenant, United States Marines. Yeah. That's a dedicated group. I'm attached to the police security division. Why'd you pull a gun on me? Well, I've been following you since you left the pub. You've been acting uh, a little strange. Subtly put. Well, then when I saw the dead man and you standing over him holding a knife, just couldn't afford to take any chances. Especially not here, not today. What's so special about today? Well, the general, of course. What general? The general. It was in all the papers yesterday. Oh, yesterday wasn't my day. On the way back from the NATO conference, he's stopping off in this country to... To play a little golf, that's right. Well, that general. That's right, sure. He's coming here? He's gonna play this golf course? He should be teeing off in about uh, five minutes. That's why I've been checking the place. Did you check Crestview yet? You mean the uh, apprentice place? That's right. Well, I paid them a little courtesy call. Of course, I have no legal jurisdiction in this country, but as the house overlooked the course, I thought I'd... Come on. What? I'll explain later. Come on. Do you like it, Mr. Prentice? A handy tool, eh? All set up, sir. How's he been behaving himself? Okay. Good. I like that, Mr. Prentice. Where's my daughter? If you've harmed her, she's fine. You behave, she's all right. She behaves, you're all right. Beautiful. You've done a good job. I think it's this way. You sure? You must be somewhere near the main entrance. Here, give me a boost up. Get back to the pub. Call the police. Get back to the pub?
What's happening? She's fine. Keep your head down, General. And slice again. Bad day's work. Correction. Two days' work. <laughs> uh, do you think we might? Uh -huh. Not today, thank you. disobeying orders. You were told to leave the money and go. I haven't got the money. 
I didn't come here to listen to excuses, Mrs. Trenton. Five thousand's the figure. Now I want it. Look, don't you understand? I don't have any more money. I, I just can't raise any more. You know the alternative. Oh. oh, I wish I had the courage to kill you. Your filth. You make me sick to my stomach. One day, I swear this, I'm going to find out who you are. You're not serious. You don't want to sell these. I'm perfectly serious. Will you buy them? Why, Louisa? I just happen to want some money, that's all. I've been a little extravagant of late. Clothes, holidays. You know, I've always been rather reckless with my spending, and now I've come across some debts that I can't meet. Did you tell your husband about this? No. No, I um, didn't want to trouble him with it. Tell me the truth. I am telling you the truth. Look, honey, I've known you for a long time. You were always a bad liar. I am not lying. Come on now. Max is a big wheel in the diplomatic corps. He's loaded. He's crazy about you. You smile and he'll give you anything you want. Well, Max is out of the country at the moment. As a matter of fact, he is most of the time, but... Anyway, I don't want to trouble him with a trifle like this. Trifle? How long have these been in your family? 150, 200, 300 years? I remember I asked you to sell them to me once. Then you said you'd rather part with your right arm. Now, that must be some trifle to make you change your mind. There are at least a dozen dealers in London who would buy these without asking all those questions. Louisa. Let go of me. Look, I'd like to help you if I can. I don't need your help. And I don't need a crystal ball. You're in some kind of trouble. Now, look, maybe there's nothing I can do, but at least you can try me. You want to help me? All right. Just give me a check for these and then forget about it. I'm sorry, John. I, I know you mean well, but I'll be all right. Really, I will. She's very beautiful. Yeah, she is. Must have known her pretty well. We had something going for us one time. At one time? John, this receipt's dated today. You paid her far too much for these miniatures, you know that. Well, that's the privilege of an old friend, David. And another one is to poke your nose in where you're not really wanted. Grab your coat. We're going for a drive. <laughs>
tell her? Yes, I've got it. Where? All right, then, in an hour. Yes, of course I know. I've been through it enough times, haven't I? Louisa, I... Can't you knock before coming into a room? I'm sorry. I just didn't think. Surely one is entitled to a little privacy in one's own home. Oh, Jane, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to snap. It's just that... Oh, never mind. What is it? Nothing, nothing at all. It is something. You've been so tense lately. <sighs> Jane, please, don't start asking a lot of questions. I thought we might go to a film. I already have a date. Who with? A friend. Do I know him? Can't you stop cross-questioning me? Look, I'm your sister. To ask you who you're going out with, that's not cross-questioning. Well, let's just say that I'm... I'm going out somewhere and leave it at that, shall we? Can't I help? No! Just stop prying into my affairs! You don't have to scream. Look, I've got myself into a mess. I'm going to get myself out of it. And I don't want you or anybody else interfering. Now, do you understand? Just mind your own business and leave me alone. <laughs> got to be a woman driver. That was Louise's car. Well, then there's not much point in going out to her house. No, we'll go. She has a sister who lives with her. Maybe she can tell us what's bothering her. Whatever it is, it won't bother her much longer if she keeps driving like that. Peter! Oh, Peter! What's the matter? Have you... Have you heard from him again? Yes. How much this time? Five thousand. Well, have you got it? Peter, I, I, I can't go on like this anymore. You've got to help me, please. I don't see how I can. I haven't got any money. No. It isn't that. It's just that... Well, couldn't you come with me? Help me find out who he is. Louisa, you know that's dangerous. If he thought for one moment you were trying to double-cross him, he'd... he'd ruin you. I just don't care anymore. But I do care. I care very much what happens to you. I don't like seeing you hurt this way, but... believe me, however bad it is, it's much better than the alternative. I just can't think straight anymore. I don't know what to do. For the moment, there's nothing you can do. Look, in a little while, we'll start to make our plans. We'll, we'll go away somewhere where they can't touch you. Do you really mean that? Of course I do. I want us to be together more than anything else in the world. Oh. Well. That really is very romantic. You already have a date, Peter. Remember? Me. 
Get out of here. Darling, you look so exciting when you're angry. Jane, what's the matter with Louisa? Has she talked to you? Yes, but not about what's bothering her. It's obvious she's got some kind of a problem. When she came into the shop today, she was like somebody I'd never seen before. You couldn't get near her. It's been the same for me. Every time I try to say something, I get my head snapped off. Look, let's try to figure this thing out. When did it start? What sort of crowd has she been moving around with? and the usual. Uh, what? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. What time is it, please? Oh, just off ten. Thank you. Oh, well, Mrs. Trenton, your change. Pictures will be ready in half an hour. better if you didn't mention we were out here tonight. All right. I'll come back in the morning and see if I can't get some sense out of her. Excuse me a minute. John Mannering. I need your help. I'll be here until 10 o'clock. Where are you? At the discotheque. Right. I'll find it. I'll get there as fast as I can. She's in trouble. What? Jump in, David. <laughs> Can I be of any help for you, sir? No. No, nothing. Didn't she give you any idea of what was wrong? No, only that time was running out fast.
park it somewhere, David. I don't see her. Take a look in the powder room. Are you looking for someone? Louisa Trenton, do you know her? Oh, my dear. Chap, I know simply everybody. Is she here? Well, you see her, she is. If you don't, she's not. Thanks for the homespun philosophy. Yes, I served Mrs. Trenton a drink about 20 minutes ago. I've not seen her since. Thanks. Mm. My date's walked out on me, too. Come to dance. I'm sorry, honey. My card's full. Hey, it's all right, everybody. Please, let's stay away while Josie. Suicide is not awfully good for business, you know. Murder's a whole lot worse. <laughs> out to her, but she didn't answer. Just uh, walked right past. You knew Mrs. Trenton well? Well, not reasonably. Did she appear particularly distressed? She seemed rather upset. <coughs> I see. Thank you very much. Can we go now? Yes, yes, of course. Just give your address to the constable. <coughs> Inspector. Yes, sir? I don't know how long you want us to stay here, but I think it'd be a good idea if you let the sister go. She's had quite a shock. Yes, yes, of course. How very thoughtless of me. I shall have to take a statement from you. Pretty morning soon enough for that. Thank you. Would you like one of my men to drive her? I know Mrs. Trenton's car is downstairs. My assistant will take her. David, stay with her, will you? I'll be out of the house as soon as I'm finished here. All right. Well, I don't want to keep you too long, sir. I believe you uh, found the body. That's right. Perhaps you'd like to tell me all you know. Well, Inspector, I don't uh, know much more than you do. Mm, it's a very bad business. The poor woman must have been very upset to take her own life. Suicide? Oh, come on, Inspector. You don't go along with that. Everything points to it. All the people who met her tonight agreed that she was very upset. Mm, yes, that's true. She was very nervous. Have you any idea what was bothering her, Mr. Mannering? I think she had some financial problems. Gambling, perhaps? Is that just a guess, sir, or a statement of fact? Facts are not my business, Inspector. They're yours. It just seems an interesting possibility. Frankly, my only concern is to get this business settled as quickly and quietly as possible. I do have a certain reputation, you know. Yes, sir. We know all about your reputation. We have quite a bulky file on it. Well, I don't think we can get any further until the forensic boys have finished their work. You mean that's it? For the moment, yes. If there's any doubt about it being suicide, well... Look, Inspector, I can tell you right now, Louisa Trenton didn't kill herself. Now, that's the sort of thing a policeman likes to hear. A good, positive assertion. It always suggests that you know more about it than we do. <coughs> Why don't you come along with me to the office, sir, and put it all down in a statement? If it'll shake you out of the suicide theory, then fine. Right. Shall we go, then? Sergeant? <coughs> we'll talk some more. How are you feeling? All right. I must look an awful mess. Got a hanky. Is this yours? No. It's a man's. But it'll do anyway. Yes, I'd say that about covers it. Right. Just, just sign it. What now? What do you suggest? that you start looking for the killer. You really are convinced it wasn't suicide, aren't you? Inspector, a woman who's going to kill herself just doesn't telephone somebody for help. 
Equally, a woman who's going to kill herself doesn't do anything rationally. Look, Inspector, that's a pretty glib way to cover up anything you don't want to bother about. You listen to me. I'm as keen as anybody on finding how Louisa Trenton died. <coughs> but I, I deal, I deal with evidence, Mr. Manning. Evidence. <coughs> Look, I can't offer you any concrete facts, but my instincts tell me something is wrong, very wrong. Oh, for heaven's sake. Look at the facts, man. One, she was upset. Two, you told me yourself she needed money. Yeah, and the position of the wound will correspond with the way the gun was held. That's right. And there'll be powder burns on her dress. Fingerprint and paraffin tests will prove that she held the gun. Exactly. Those are the kind of facts that I deal in, Mr. Mannering. Facts, not instincts. You give me one good reason why I should start a murder hunt, and I won't stop until I made an arrest. Can I use that as an invitation to do a little prowling on my own? No, you can't. This is a police matter, and we handle it in our own way. <laughs> With or without an invitation, I'm in this thing. Now, I can't wait for a cure for the common cold in order to get you out from behind that desk. Finding the body doesn't give you any special rights. You place your foot outside the line of the law and you'll wonder what's hit you. Inspector, you apply that kind of enthusiasm to the case and you wind up with first prize. Prize? A murderer, Inspector. A real live murderer. Gently, gently. What do you mean, gently? Did Don't it... get excited. Accidents happen in our business like any other. Did they hang you for accidents like this? Listen, the three of us had a good thing going. Now, now it's finished. No, no. Just a temporary setback. Oh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm getting out. I, I'm not going to get involved in any murder. No, no. What would all your lady friends think if they knew you were chicken? Your yellow friend, when the chips are down, your bright yellow. Shut up, you hear me? Shut up, shut up! Oh, you scare me, friends. You really scare me. I'm warning you, if you don't shut up, I'll... You're what? How would the ladies like you all scarred up? <laughs> Look, I, I... I just don't want to get involved in, in murder. Do you understand? Ah, oh, of course, friend. I understand. Like I said, you're chicken. Listen, Sutton. My part of the deal was just setting up the women, not... Well, I don't want to be around when the police start asking questions. What'll you do, friend? I'm getting out of the country for a while. I'm, I'm booked onto the first plane to Nice in the morning. Now, I want my share of tonight's take before I leave. No, there was no take tonight. Don't you lie to me. She had the money when she came to my house. I saw it. She didn't have it at the place. You're lying. You, you two are trying to cheat me out of my share. Now, I, I, I'm warning you, Sutton. I, I want that money before I leave in the morning. Otherwise, I might leave a short farewell note for the police. Do you understand? I, I want my money. You'll get something, friend. You'll get something. Hello? Can I talk? Listen, Mr. Langley was just here. He's getting a bit loose at the mouth. Sure. I'd be glad to do something about it. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry I was so long. I couldn't find where anything was. You should have let me make it. No, I'll do it. That'll be the Baron. I'll let him in. Thank you, Jane. You feeling better now? Yes, thank you. Hi. How did you get on? Not so good. The inspector's still sold on the suicide theory. You don't think we could be wrong? I mean, it is possible she did kill herself. Well, anything's possible. Look, Jane, 
I hate to put you through this, but I need some kind of a lead. Like what? Letters, photographs, anything. Where did she keep her personal things? In the bureau. Drink this. I'll get another cup. Thank you. I can't believe she's dead. There's so much of her in this house. I wish we had something more substantial in atmosphere. Have you got a key to this? No, Louisa always kept it with her. She was drawing some very large amounts, all in cash. 10, 12, 15,000, all in the last couple of months. 15,000? Well, Curtis must have been right. Perhaps she was gambling. No, gambling is an impulse thing. These checks are all dated at regular intervals. No, I'd say Louisa was being blackmailed. But who? What did they have on her? John, I've just remembered something. Jane, have you still got that man's handkerchief? It was in Louisa's car. It might mean nothing at all. There's a monogram on it. P.L. Who's that? Do you know anyone with those initials? No, I don't think so. Oh, it might be Peter Langley's. Who's he? Louisa used to go out with him sometime. She was just a friend. There was nothing in it. The handkerchief might have been in the car for quite a while, mind. The fact that it was there at all makes him worth talking to, doesn't it? Where does he live? Barnsmore Cottage, just a few miles away. I'll find it. Look, David, you stay here with Jane. Go through that bureau and see what you can come up with. Okay. Oh, you better give me the handkerchief. <laughs> What is it? Records have traced the gun. Belongs to a man called Peter Langley. Get a car. Let me guess. You're leaving town. Devil are you. What do you want? I brought your laundry. Well, it is yours, isn't it? See, it's got my initials on it. Yes, I suppose it is. So, so what? It was found in Louisa Trenton's car. Well, that's possible. I, I saw quite a lot of her for a while. See you last night? No. Anyway, what's it got to do with you? Who are you? My name's John Mannering. Baron. I've heard Louisa speak of you. Look, Mr. Mannering, I don't know how you're involved in this, but it had nothing to do with what happened tonight. What happened tonight, Mr. Lang? Well, Louisa, you mean? It's tragic. I, I, I talked to Brockhurst. He, he runs a discotheque. He, he told me what happened. Well, go on. Keep talking. I've got nothing else to say. Try and think of something. Look, are you going to get out of here, or, or do I have to throw you out? I guess you do. I said get out. <laughs> Do you want to talk, or do you want a rough house? It's your choice. I, I, I had nothing to do with her death, I, I swear it. But you were blackmailing her. No, not me. Who then? I don't know. No, 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 no. Look, look I, I, I got a share. I, the others did all the fixing. I, I, I just set her up. How? I was introduced to her at the discotheque. I, I, I met her there a few times, and then she came back here for a drink one night. <laughs> that has a familiar ring. All the drinks were loaded, I suppose. It's not a new racket. We, we've worked it before a dozen times. All the women rich, all of them married? Yes. All right, let's hear the rest of it. Well, I, I, I doped her drinks. She, she passed out, and we took some compromising photographs. And threatened to send copies to the husband. Look, I, I know it's a rotten business, but it, it paid off. Louisa never thought I was involved. She thought I was being blackmailed as well. I want the prints and the negatives. Where are they? I, I don't know. Look, Langley, I'm warning you. I'm in no mood for stalling. And I'm telling you, I don't know where they keep them. I had nothing to do with that side of things. Then just tell me who they are. Who killed Louisa? All right. I'll do a deal with you. I'll tell you names, places, everything. All I want is to get on that plane to Nice in the morning. No deals, Langley. 
No deals at all. You just give me the straight facts and then take your chances with the police. Now, I'm not going to wait. Now, I'll work you over all night if I have to. Oh. All right. I'll take it. I'm going to kill you, friend. <laughs> you now, friend. <clears throat> Mr. Manning. This will take some explaining. Inspector, if you get your men out into the grounds, you might still get the guy who did it. I've got all I want here. Inspector, this one certainly didn't commit suicide. Two shots in the bank. You told me I'd get myself a real live murderer. And I have. You. <laughs> Bless you. Did Langley tell you anything before you killed him? Unload the question. Did he? When do we get to the bright lights and the rubber hose? You're in a very serious position, Mr. Manring. Oh, come on, Inspector. With the evidence you've got, you couldn't give me a parking ticket. We found you here with a body. And your case ends right there. No gun, no motive, nothing. All right. Let's go over it again, right from the start. All right, Inspector. I came here. I haven't come across anything yet. Of course, it would help if I knew what we were looking for. I've been through these. Have you got any more I can check? Thanks. I'll go. Well, these ballistic and print people are on their way, sir. Well, if you're going to start playing detective and you're through with me, I'll leave. All right, Manry. But remember what I told you earlier, you keep out of this. And I mean that. Inspector, I'm already in. Louisa was a very good friend, and I hate blackmail. And I'm not particularly fond of being used for target practice. Now, the only way you're going to keep me out of this is by throwing me into a cell. All right, Manry. Good night, Inspector. Right, let's start. You check the bedroom and I'll stay in here. David. What happened? They've got Jane. Keep talking. We heard a car. She went out and then she screamed. When I went through there, I got hit. Did you see anybody? No. It's been ringing regularly every ten minutes. Hello? Mannery? Now listen, I'm going to say this just once. The money Mrs. Trenton was bringing us tonight, we didn't get it. But we know who did. Tell me. Well, don't act down with me, friend. You were there. You found the body. You had enough time to lift the cash before anybody got to you. Is that what you were after when you tried to gun me at Langley's house? Yeah. You know, we want that money. If we don't get it, the sister's going to end up as dead as Mrs. Trenton. Don't believe me. <laughs> Listen. Give it to him, please. Jane. Jane, can you hear me? Do as the lady says, friend. I'll call you later to tell you when and where. What are you going to do? Find her. Where do we start? There's only one place to start, at the discotheque. That's where Langley made his contacts. That's where Louisa was murdered. Come on.
looks deserted. Come on. If someone breaks in here, I don't stand around asking questions. Well, that sounds reasonable. Now, what do you want? A fast game, a question and answer. What sort of deal do you have with Langley? I didn't have any deal with him. Well, he came here quite a lot, sometimes with Louisa. He did? Well, he used this place to meet people. Women liked him. He'd sponge on them. That's how he made his living. Oh, he might have made pen money like that, but for the big dough, he must have had something else going for him. Well, if he did, I certainly didn't know anything about it. Are you sure? Look, I run this club to provide drink, music, and dark corners. All right, so the members may not be the nicest people in London, but I don't inquire into their business. I don't know about you, Brockhurst. You're almost too helpful. What does that mean? It means you talk a lot, and I still haven't got one lead. I am sorry. Well, I'll talk to you later. Just don't leave town. Huh? Well, I'll be here. Well, I'm sorry about your camera. If it's damaged, you'll send me a bill. Oh, don't worry. It isn't mine. It's Smiler's. I'll tell him. Who was that? Uh, Sutton. Paul Sutton. He has a photographer's concession here. No, uh, I mean, what did you call him before? Oh, Smiler, you mean. He walks around with a perpetual grin. He's nuts. That's why they call him... I get the picture, Brockhurst. Where does he live? Uh, 27 Stone Street. Now, may I please have my gun back? No, I think I'll hold on to it. This promises to be a long, hard night. <laughs> Not too bad. I do wish people would stop doing this. What happened? Something very interesting. I'll tell you about it. Come on. Yes, but why Stone Street? They're going to call us at the house to tell us where to take the money. It's only a long shot, David, but they were using photographs to blackmail Louisa. Do you think Sutton might be in this? Well, Brockhurst called him a smiler, and the guy who took a shot at me seemed to think it was pretty funny. There's number 27. You want me to come with you? I don't think your skull could take any more. I'll be right back. Watch yourself. Come on, friend. Can't you 
Don't you see me? thing I'm gonna break. Now, where's the girl? Where did she go? In there! Oh, John, thank goodness. It's all right. It's all right now. I think he's quite harmless. He said he'd kill me if you didn't give him the money. You see, that's why I had to find you, because I haven't got it. But he said that... I know what he said. Louisa must have hidden it before they got to her. Hidden it? There are so many things I don't understand. There are a few things I'd like to know myself. All right, Fran. You're going to turn me in? No. I'm going to keep you for a souvenir. Now, I want those pictures you were using to blackmail Mrs. Trenton. Sure. Yes, you're sure, you, you can have the pictures. You, you, you'll give me a break, won't you? You've had your break. I didn't kill you. Now, I want the pictures. All right. Look, honey. David's downstairs in the car. Ask him to take you home. And then come back for me, will you? Uh, listen, there's, uh, there's still a lot of mileage left in these pictures. Oh, oh I know the Trenton woman's dead, but there are others. They pay off well. You could cut yourself in for a nice slice of that. You must be crazy. They were worth a fortune. You're not going to have much use for money from now on. Now tell me, what happened tonight? Well, that shouldn't be too hard to figure. Louisa was supposed to leave the money in the storeroom, and instead she waited for you with a gun. You're going to have to prove all this. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. <laughs> I was just going to the car and I saw this man. Oh. Where'd he go? That way. David. It's too late now. Just take Jane on home. Aren't you coming? I've got something to finish here first. Inspector Powell. Yes, Manring. Mrs. Trenton's killer is dead. No, I didn't. Look, you want to wrap this thing up tonight? No, it's not finished yet. There's one more. Look, just meet me at the discotheque in 20 minutes. just before you got here. I hoped you wouldn't show up, Jane. It was a lot of money to leave lying around. Yeah. It was almost perfect, wasn't it? That phony kidnapping bit. Very convincing. Then back at the studio. You didn't go straight to David in the car. 
Nice try, but it didn't work. I couldn't take the chance of Sutton talking. And you put this whole lousy scheme together yourself. Smiler, Langley. Why? I wanted money. But your sister was a rich woman. Yes. And I was a poor relation. Oh, she gave me things. When she was sick of them, when she didn't want them anymore. She even gave me an allowance. Oh, very generous. And I had to be grateful all of the time. Her and her rich friends. Stupid, stupid women. Oh, how I hated them. But most of all, I hated Louisa. <laughs> You satisfied, Inspector? All right, Sergeant. Let's get out into the air. <laughs> 